Let's get right into it. Number 12. Phantom Smell and Taste If you've ever eaten space food, you know the menu is usually described with words like nutritious and calorie-dense, never delicious. But it gets worse. Astronauts often complain that even the mediocre food they do get tastes or smells metallic, bland, or just plain off. It's not the food, though. It's the phantom smell and taste glitch. With all that fluid pooling in their sinuses and heads, the sense of smell, which accounts for roughly 80% of what you perceive as taste, gets completely dulled. It's like having a permanent, low-grade head cold that never clears. But sometimes, people report smelling or tasting something that isn't there, like the phantom dog bark but for your mouth. It's thought to be related to the same neurological short circuits that cause the visual illusions. Essentially, your brain, being a perpetual drama queen, sometimes decides to make up entirely new flavors, often ones reminiscent of old coins or burnt dust, just to keep your taste buds from getting bored. Number 11. The Calibrated Cough You might not realize it, but every time you cough or swallow on Earth, your body automatically braces for the reaction forces. You generate a tiny amount of counterforce to prevent yourself from being knocked off balance. Now, put yourself in a weightless environment. If an astronaut coughs, or sneezes, or even tries to pass gas, the reaction force is entirely undamped by gravity or friction with a floor. The sudden expulsion of air acts like a tiny, accidental jetpack. Astronauts have had to learn what's called the calibrated cough, where they instinctively grab onto something before they cough to prevent being sent flying across the module like a biological billiard ball. It highlights how much of our daily, mundane movements are subtly anchored by gravity. Your body has an ancient, built-in assumption that the world is heavy and sticky. And in space, a simple tickle in your throat turns into a physics demonstration. Your respiratory system can literally launch you across the room and that's a level of personal propulsion you just don't get in rush hour traffic. Number 10. Bone Density Denial When you spend your life on Earth, every step you take, every jump, every trip down the stairs, is a tiny, ongoing stress test for your skeleton. This stress is actually a good thing. It signals to your bones to stay dense and strong, a phenomenon dictated by Wolf's Law. Your bones are essentially saying, All right, I'm needed here. I'll stick around. But in microgravity, your bones get the message. Vacation time. No stress detected. They immediately start leaching calcium and minerals like a bank robber in the night, leading to an alarming rate of bone loss about 1 to 1.5% 1 each month, especially in load-bearing areas like the hips and spine. This isn't just a fun fact. It's a serious problem known as bone density denial, or just space-induced osteoporosis. To fight this, astronauts have to spend hours every day strapped to special exercise machines that simulate the compressive forces of gravity. If you're not constantly lifting weights the size of small moons, your body will literally start dissolving itself, demonstrating that your entire skeletal structure is just a passive participant in the gravitational scam we call life. Number 9. The Ocular Onslaught You're a high-performing astronaut. You spent your life with perfect eyesight. Then you spend a few months in space, and suddenly, you can't read the instrument panel without squinting. Meet the ocular onslaught, or space-associated neuroocular syndrome. Remember how all the fluid rushes to your head? That constant, low-grade pressure increases the intracranial pressure inside your skull. That pressure then subtly pushes on the backs of your eyeballs. This distorts their shape, flattening the optic nerve, and often causing changes that mimic pressure-induced eye disease on Earth. Astronauts can experience blurred vision, cotton wool spots on the retina, and a visible swelling of the optic nerve head. It's yet another side effect of your body's complete inability to deal with fluid management in zero-g. It's like your head is a slightly overinflated balloon, and your eyeballs are the first things to get squeezed. It's a pretty ironic cosmic joke. You travel to the stars, and your reward is needing glasses. Number 8. Space Adaptation Syndrome Imagine stepping onto a massive trampoline made of jello after spending your entire life convinced that the ground is solid and down is a direction. That's essentially what happens to an astronaut's inner ear the moment they hit microgravity. On Earth, your vestibular system, the tiny fluid and crystal-filled apparatus in your ear, is the ultimate diva, constantly yelling at your brain about which way is down, thanks to gravity. But in space, the diva loses her job, the fluid floats, 
the crystals are confused, and your brain is suddenly getting three wildly different text messages at the same time from your eyes, your muscles, and your inner ear. This sensory conflict is what we politely call space adaptation syndrome. Symptoms include a terrible case of space nausea, disorientation, and that classic puffy face because all the fluid that gravity used to hold in your legs is now rushing up and pooling in your head like a biological turtleneck. Nearly 7 out of 10 astronauts deal with this. So if you ever find yourself floating through the ISS, remember, the person next to you might be a top-tier pilot, but right now, they're just trying really hard not to throw up in their helmet. Basically, your nervous system is throwing a tantrum in your honor. Number 7. Visual Reorientation Illusions Here on Earth, you know a ceiling is a ceiling because it's up, and a floor is a floor because it's down. Your brain is a gravitational fundamentalist, but when you're floating in the International Space Station, where there is no objective up, your brain gets real weird about it. You might be working normally, then you turn your head, see a crewmate floating upside down, and suddenly snap. The wall you were just looking at becomes the floor. It's like your perception of reality just pulled a 90-degree flip to stay aligned with the nearest available visual cue, which is often just the biggest panel of lights or equipment. Astronauts have reported feeling like the entire room is rotating around them just by opening their eyes. This isn't a mental illness. It's just your visual system trying to compensate for the fact that the old-school compass, the one in your inner ear, has been tossed out of a window that doesn't exist. They call these visual reorientation illusions. It's a reminder that your brain is mostly just making stuff up, and it relies heavily on gravity to keep the narrative straight. Number 6. The Shadow Sleeper You'd think sleeping in a silent, zero-G environment, cocooned in a cozy sleeping bag strapped to a wall, would be the most relaxing experience ever. You'd be wrong. Astronauts often report a kind of low-grade, constant sensory deprivation. On Earth, even in the dark, you have gravity telling you where you are and you have noise, wind, traffic, your neighbor's questionable music taste. In space, all those background signals vanish. The result? Your brain, which absolutely despises dead air, starts trying to fill the void. This leads to the shadow sleeper phenomenon, where people experience mild, but persistent, hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations, the kind that happen right as you fall asleep or wake up. They'll see flashes of light or hear phantom voices. One famous report involved an astronaut swearing they heard a dog bark, despite being several hundred miles above the nearest canine. It's essentially your bored consciousness throwing random images and sounds up on the screen just to prove it's still working. Number 5. Perceptual Drift We all know the concept of muscle memory. You do a task a thousand times, and eventually, your body does it without your brain's permission. This is what makes riding a bike or typing second nature. Now, Imagine doing one of the most complex, precise tasks, ever docking a spacecraft and the environment you trained in suddenly has entirely different rules. This is perceptual drift. You spend hours training in simulators where up and down are fixed, and where your body has weight. Then you get into the real spacecraft, and everything you practiced feels wrong. Your hand-eye coordination is thrown off because your internal model of how your body moves in space is based on gravity, and that model keeps trying to assert itself. You reach for a switch, and because your body expects to resist weight, you overshoot the target, zooming past it and bumping your nose on the console. It's the ultimate I learned this on a computer problem, where your perfectly calibrated, earth-optimized body is now just a glitching avatar in a weightless game it wasn't built for. Number 4. The Red Blood Cell Conspiracy Your body is a surprisingly fragile democracy, and when you take away gravity, certain parts start campaigning for their own interests. Specifically, the part that starts slacking off is your red blood cell factory. On Earth, your kidneys produce a hormone called erythropoietin that tells your bone marrow, hey, we need more oxygen carriers, get to work. But in space, your circulatory system is a mess. All that fluid pooling in your chest and head tricks your body into thinking you have too much blood volume even though the total amount hasn't really changed. Your body's response? It decides, We're overstocked on plasma. Stop making the carriers. It's like a biological knee-jerk reaction to the fluid shift. This causes space anemia, a condition where astronauts lose around 15% of their red blood cell mass within the first few weeks. 
They return to Earth slightly anemic, which isn't great, but it proves one thing. Your body's definition of normal is a very thin slice of the universe, and anything outside of it is treated as a medical emergency. Number 3. Glove Ballooning Syndrome Working outside the ISS during a spacewalk, or extravehicular activity, is one of the most physically demanding jobs in history. Astronauts wear massive, multi-layered pressurized suits. The gloves, however, are where things get truly gnarly. To keep the astronauts safe in the vacuum of space, the suit pressure is about 4.3 psi. That doesn't sound like much, but try constantly bending something that's actively trying to inflate itself like a balloon. The pressure constantly fights the astronauts' hand movements. This intense, prolonged resistance causes excruciating fatigue and pain, eventually leading to a condition unofficially known as glove ballooning syndrome. Astronauts report losing fingernails due to the sheer force required to grasp tools or operate switches. It's like performing intricate surgery while squeezing a baseball covered in sandpaper for eight hours straight. It's proof that sometimes, the only thing keeping you alive is also actively trying to turn your hands into useless, bruised paddles. Number 2. Cosmic Ray Confusion You're nestled in your tiny metal can orbiting the Earth, thinking you're safe. You're not. You're constantly being bombarded by high-energy particles flung across the universe, known as cosmic rays. While the spacecraft and Earth's magnetosphere offer some protection, some of these highly charged particles still penetrate the shielding, especially during spacewalks. When a cosmic ray hits the liquid-filled eyeball of an astronaut, it excites the fluid, causing a tiny flash of light inside the retina. Astronauts have consistently reported seeing these brief, bright streaks, sparks, or stars even when their eyes are closed in the pitch black. It's a phenomenon called cosmic ray confusion. It's not a hallucination. It's a direct, physical interaction between your eyeball and the subatomic wreckage of distant supernovas. Think of it as the universe sending you a microscopic, high-speed text message directly to your visual cortex, reminding you that deep space is actively trying to interrupt your sleep cycle. Number 1. The Detached Homesickness Everyone expects to miss home, but astronauts often report a type of profound homesickness that goes beyond missing their family or the smell of rain. They experience the detached homesickness. From orbit, Earth is the most stunning, vibrant, undeniably alive object they've ever seen. It's the classic overview effect. They see the entire globe without borders, a swirling tapestry of blue and white, and they feel a transcendent connection to humanity. But here's the glitch. They are utterly physically detached from it. They can see the entire history and future of their species, yet they can't feel the breeze, smell the soil, or touch the ground. It creates an almost existential melancholy, a sense of belonging to everything, while belonging to nothing at all. They are literally the most privileged voyeurs in history, staring at the only thing that matters while knowing they are trapped in a metal box far away. It's a loneliness that comes from seeing all of creation and knowing you have to wait weeks or months to be a functional part of it again. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.